this is a swing district, a true swing district. And a lot of swingers do live there. <laughs> So just for the record, you know, those swingers are a big part of the reason it's now a Democratic majority electorate. Yeah, so I is. think we should give them yeah. a round of applause. Because they don't swing at the polls. They don't <laughs> swing at the polls everywhere else. <laughs> My next guest is running for Congress for a second time, which is funny because if I ran two times, I would die. Please welcome to the stage, Will Rollins. <laughs> Hi, good to see you again. You. You Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Uh, now, Will. Welcome back. Thank you. You're running once again to represent the 41st District? Yes. Uh, this includes Palm Springs. Are you the most optimistic gay man in California? <laughs> I can think of a few others. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of, there's a lot, there's a lot of positive gays around. <laughs> now, you prosecuted the Beverly Hills insurrectionist Gina Bisignano for her crimes on January 6th, during which she wore a Louis Vuitton sweater and, a Chanel, bo and Chanel boots. Was it hard to throw the book at someone so cool? <laughs> Well, she, she also called for uh, people to bring in their gas masks and weapons um, and then stood in the hallway as a Capitol police officer was crushed in a door by her fellow rioters. So, um, no, it wasn't hard to throw the book at her. <laughs> it does capture something about MAGA grievances because this is somebody who has a lot in life and decides that they are so aggrieved and so... Um, uh, uh, inspired by these, these by Trump's sort of, you know, call to mayhem, call to you know, you're losing something. The country, you're losing your country. That she threw her life away uh, to do to be part of this sort of violent act. What did you take away from the experience of prosecuting her? Yeah, I mean that in many ways led me here today. I mean, I um, originally ran for Congress by kind of impulsively quitting my job and deciding to run in what was then a Trump plus seven seat, because while those of us in federal law enforcement were responding to the attack, my opponent, Ken Calvert, was voting to decertify the election, voting against a committee to even investigate the attack, and then final straw for me, called for dropping charges. And, you know, I love the, the joke you had to open the segment because there are a lot of things about running for Congress that absolutely suck, um, just to be blunt with the crowd. <laughs> But if you don't have people willing to step up to the plate and take out these people who are willing to throw away our entire republic, um, we're going to be in a tough spot. And that's why I'm, I'm really proud to be back in this. And that's why I think the American people are going to return Democrats to the majority in 2024 in the House. Now, the Supreme Court uh, is gearing up to hear a case called Fisher v. the United States. That is a case that could potentially upend over 300 January 6 convictions or uh, cases. Uh, do you think that would give these insurrections enough time to get in shape for the 2025 insurrection? <laughs> well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure that I'm there to certify the next election uh, because we need a Congress that's willing to do it. I mean, the reality is uh, no matter what happens in November, Donald Trump is going to declare victory, and you need to have members of the United States House that are going to certify the true results of that election, whatever they may be. And, um, you know, we can't have these people back out there training to get in shape for another insurrection, and we can't have a nominee. There should not be a nominee of one of our two major political parties who is encouraging political violence in the United States. That should not be up for dispute. Yeah, and yet here we are, you know. <laughs> If shoulds were horses. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For yeah. sure. Uh, now, now, let's talk about your district. Uh, this is a swing district, a true swing district. And a lot of swingers do live there. <laughs> and, like, and not swinger novices, people that have been doing it for a long time. These are Palm Springs gays. They have records going back a long time. <laughs> Swing district. I'll, I'll help. I'm getting back to it. Uh, what is it like trying to persuade a, uh, in, a, in a district where there are for just genuinely like a moderate place where uh, somehow even in this environment, not to this audience, it's like, how, how could you be, how, could, how, could, how is this a moment for ambivalence? Yeah, you know? I mean, and, and and so just for the record, you know, those swingers are a big part of the reason it's now a Democratic majority electorate. Yeah, so I think we should give them yeah. a round of applause. Because they don't swing at the polls. They <laughs> don't swing at the polls everywhere else. 
So it is a top pickup opportunity for the party. It's the first time Calvert's ever faced. No. The man's running for Congress. Show some fucking respect. It's a prosecutor. Show some respect. Show some decorum. I'm so disappointed. But it is split. It's split 50-50. Um, and the truth is that in this district, I really do think we can win some moderate Republicans. I think there is a difference between Republicans who are part of the regular electorate and MAGA. And we even saw that in some of the primary results with uh, the percent that Nikki Haley was pulling, for example. And what I've noticed, I think, in my district, when you have a moderate electorate, a purple district, where you've got folks who are angry at Washington, D.C., is there are a lot of things that unite us across party lines. If you just look at the anger towards Congress, and it's dysfunction right now, right? We may not have Mike Johnson as Speaker of the House much longer because of the recent motion from Marjorie Taylor Greene. But I think what I've seen people in both parties really galvanize around is the idea that Congress should be working for you. It's been working for the members, people like Calvert, who's seen his net worth go up by $20 million since he was first elected in 92, for way too long. And I, I used to say, you know, I'm probably one of the only Democrats in the entire United States who can run an attack ad against his Republican opponent featuring a Fox News clip talking about the Republicans' corruption. And so there are a lot of Republican voters in my district who think that all members of Congress should be banned from trading stocks, for example that there should be a lifetime ban on lobbying by former members of Congress, and um, that we should overturn Citizens United and get money out of politics altogether. When uh, uh, Democrats uh, lost the House, uh, and it wasn't because of uh, swing districts uh, throughout the middle of the country, it actually was because of some uh, 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 failures to to galvanize people in California and in New York, and one of the the reasons was that uh, in California, New York, the issue of abortion didn't feel as salient. That there were places where abortion was really on the line at the state level, and people really turned out. We saw that just this week in Alabama. Uh, but in, now that we are s seeing so much debate over a national abortion ban. Now, Trump is on the, on the precipice of coming out for a specific national abortion ban. Uh, do you find that that is motivating some of these moderate, even Republican women especially, but Republican voters? 100%. I mean, I, my grandmother, who was a lifelong Republican, who met my grandfather in World War II, serving in the U.S. military, came back to Southern California, started a small business that makes parts for fighter jets, still operates to this day. Somebody who, despite being a lifelong Republican, was also a fan of Gloria Steinem, who also believed that the government had no place telling women what they could and could not do with their bodies. There are a lot of people like that out there in the regular electorate, even majorities of Republicans. So I think what we have to do for those of us running in California and New York this cycle is make sure that everybody here and everybody in our districts knows that a federal ban means it's illegal in California. We have to convey that message to the electorate, and it is up to us to ensure that the next Congress passes the Women's Health Protection Act and resto restores Roe versus Wade as the law of the land in this country once again. Now, as you mentioned, you're, you're, you're running against Republican Congressman Ken Calvert this, uh, this fall, uh, a man who has been named to multiple most corrupt politician lists. Uh, I do think he combines a really interesting form of uh, uh, old school, get this guy the fuck out of here, and new school, get this guy the fuck out of here. It's like he's bringing together like, like kind of the, 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 the like old school corruption plus the embrace of MAGA. It's a really interesting combination. It must be fascinating. Now, <laughs> but, but uh, uh, we're going to play a segment we're calling Toxic Kennergy. <laughs> <laughs> because of that toxic mix, I'm going to have you blind rank five of Ken Calvert's worst wrongdoings. You will not know the scandal I will say next. Will it be worse than the one I just said? Will it be slightly less worse? This is going to be hard because he's done a bunch of terrible shit. So uh, uh, let's, let's get to it. Uh, first scandal. I don't want you to see these cards. All right. Uh, not that you cheat. The, man, the, man's a, was a, the man was a Justice Department official. All right. First, first blind rank scandal. Bought land in Riverside County near a freeway he earmarked congressional funding for, then flipped the land for a profit in full view of the public and stayed in office. I'm, 
Where, that you can rank it from what are we doing five of these one to five I, i'm gonna say that's i'm gonna say that's number one number one you number say that's one. the worst one yeah all right okay <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> let's keep going signed an amicus brief to overturn roe v wade i'm gonna say that's number one <laughs> Okay, um, you know what? Uh, sometimes you gotta change the rule. That's what Congress does, changes <laughs> rules. Was one of the 139 House Republicans who voted against certifying the results of the 2020 presidential election following January 6th. Number one again. Number right one there. again, man. <laughs> repeatedly voted against having background checks for gun purchases. Number one. Voted against a bill that would bar uh, child sexual abusers from being able to sue doctors who provide child incest victims with abortion services. Is there anything higher than number one? <laughs> Jesus. Hey, how'd you lose to this guy? <laughs> I wake up every morning asking myself that question, um, but it does get me out of bed to make sure that I don't lose to him twice. And, and you have been campaigning in this district and, and making sure people really get to know you. Uh, uh, what can people do right now? This is gonna be one of the districts that determines whether or not Democrats uh, retake the House. And this is a district we can and should win because Will Rollins is such a good candidate. Uh, so thank you for being here. What can people do to support the campaign? Uh, you can go to willrollinsforcongress.com. Sign up to help us volunteer, uh, walk out, knock doors, make phone calls, text, contribute, everything you can do because this really will be one of the seats that decides the majority. Now, now how close was it last time? It went from, it was Trump, it, Trump won this district. This was a Trump plus seven district that in redistricting has now become a Democratic majority, narrow Democratic majority electorate. So let's get this. Let's get this seat back. Yeah. Let's do it. Will Rollins, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you, guys. One more time. Next congressman from Palm Springs. That's cool.